check this out, you guys. In that case, what a shame and what a waste. All right, so now for the biggest criticism of British Airways, is the salad is um, incredibly basic, as you can see. So I put this timer on about a minute after I finished my main course to see how long it would take them to collect the meals. What's up, travelers? Good morning from Wagamama at Heathrow Airport. I am just looking out over the tarmac right now and I can see in the corner of my eye the plane that I'm gonna fly from London to Toronto. Now based on the last video where I mentioned what I'm flying now and probably based on the title you know what's on the schedule for today. It is British Airways A350-1000 with the club suit. The busier the airport the less I like vlogging there so I'm gonna try to vlog as much as I can because I got a nice corner here. Today is an exciting day and I just want to say before we get into the video, um, I already have some complaints which I'm going to take up but uh, it is a big issue if you're flying British Airways so make sure you stick with me until I'm on the plane when I'm going to mention those but for now I just want to say I redeemed a mere 50,000 miles for this flight and now I know 50,000 might sound like a lot but nowadays that's a steal for transatlantic business class and a lot of people don't go with British Airways Executive Club because they think that, oh, the rates are expensive for long haul, but 50,000 miles, honestly, is such a good price. And the best part is, which I hinted at in the last video, is if you add a connecting leg from elsewhere in Europe. So I flew from Madrid up here, but you can also fly from Gothenburg, for example, you can cut the UK departure tax. So what I did was I booked um, Madrid to London, 15,000 miles plus a few dollars in taxes, not bad. But I selected, when I put in the search, I put Madrid to Toronto and I said I want to add a layover. So what happens then is that I can fly just to London and continue at any point when I want from London to Toronto but only pay the tax that I would from Madrid. So now I ended up paying about $200 in taxes instead of $600. So I saved almost $400 in taxes in the end just by having an origin in Europe, which is a great hack for you guys because again, 65,000 miles all the way from Madrid and a life last seat to Toronto plus $200 is a great deal. So for my Swedish friends, if you want to earn British Airways Avios and make a redemption like this, American Express is currently offering until November 6th for a limited time increased sign-up bonuses on their membership rewards earning and SES credit cards. I'll leave some links below so you can check that out, but you could potentially earn up to 250,000 membership rewards. So make sure you check it out because this is a great limited time deal. Also in the US, if you have Amex or Chase cards, you can transfer those to British Airways and redeem for this flight. So as always, this review is completely self-funded, completely honest. BA doesn't know I'm taking this flight. I didn't receive an upgrade or anything. So um, you know that of all the flight reviews you're watching, this one is fully my opinion. All right, you guys, we have some viewers over here. Say hi. British Airways only has two A350s in their fleet so far. The seats on the A350s, the new club suites, are honestly better in some ways than their first class. I'm gonna see if I'll do a comparison video between club suite and first class, but definitely, as I said, on Friday, I'm gonna have a video um, club suite versus the old business class so we can see just how big the difference is. Right now I'm here in the C concourse and I have the most beautiful view ever of this British Airways A380, 747s, all the goodness. Let's do this. Welcome on board the club suite. Check this out, you guys. Here is my seat, 17K. Look how beautiful this cabin is. It's dark, but so, so classy. In a one, two, two, one, two, one configuration. And wow. I'm honestly so impressed by how nice this looks. We have all our bedding waiting at the seat right there. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hi guys, I am smiling so hard right now. Do you guys want to get the full tour of the seat? But where do we start? Maybe back here and we'll work our way around this so, so different seat from the old one. What? 
starting right here on our right side we have a bit of a storage compartment we also have a reading light plenty of storage if you check this out look here we can put phones and stuff and then here is the big compartment with loads of space the seat controls come alive and looking for it, of course, the entertainment screen and the tree table pops out like this. Decided that it's best since they leave all the bedding by the seat, which is um, interesting. I'm putting the bedding down here, and then my pillow. I don't quite know what to do with this because it's huge and so, so plush. Okay, we got some pre-departure champagne. Cheers, you guys. I like this a lot. A really, really nice champagne. Hey, you wanna have a look at the menu while we're waiting here at the gate? They just handed them out. Well, come on board. Let's do it like this. That's better by the way. Mocktails, nice. Here are the lunch options on board. As you can see, tons of different starters, and we have afternoon tea. Then here are the wines, champagnes. Okay, at first I was like, why are all the flight attendants super young and pretty girls? I was like, I've never had this on British Airways before. And then I realized it's because they're the mixed fleet crew, which means that they're paid, unfortunately, a lot less than the other crew of British Airways, and they operate a variety of routes. So generally, they're younger and less experienced, but so far the service has been really friendly. They've greeted everyone with a smile, even at the door they were saying, oh, hi sir, welcome back, great to see you dear, all this really nice stuff. The aircraft is less than a month old, and yes, it still has the new plane smell. Also, if you watch my videos often, you know that I love boarding music. If people ask me what type of music I listen to, I answer boarding music because I genuinely do. I download it onto my iTunes and I listen to it on my phone and I love some good boarding music. So I'm here on Seat Guru. The plane has 331 seats and every single seat in economy is taken on this flight. Pretty much every seat in premium economy and there's like two empty seats up here in club. So BH does a good job filling their flights. And check this out, I've got the shoulder harness on now and uh, ready to go. British Airways unfortunately tried to skimp with costs on the seat. So for example, there are no individual air nozzles up there, which is a shame. Also, many airlines have exterior cameras on the A350, but British Airways did not install any on here. And lastly, most airlines on the reverse herringbone have a storage compartment in this armrest as well. I don't know if it's because of the door, but for some reason, British Airways doesn't have one here. Why don't we have a look at the amenities? Kit. The amenity kit is really cute because it's so so small like here's my phone and here's the kit So it's just a tiny bit bigger than an iPhone Like in my hand I can literally just hold it like this I put the eye mask back here just to show you the eye mask is literally as big as the kit That is hilarious. We also have back here some socks earbuds toothbrush toothpaste pen and some different spa products from White Company. Overall, I think this is an excellent amenity kit. I'm obsessed with this eye mask, it's so big. Look, <laughs> I can cover half my face. Even now I'm covering my mouth and my eyes. Wow, the definition is crazy good. All this satisfying information. Wow, the altitude is live. How awesome is this? I wanna see the map. So here we go, uh, we can see our flight information by clicking here. I like to do it in Imperial on flights. We can choose what view we want. I think I might watch this one. Screen quality is 
honestly so, so high. The entertainment system is surprisingly really, really good, like much better than many other European airlines, so thumbs up for that. I always check out the comedy TV shows and the selection is great. Okay, you guys, so we are starting the flight with some mixed nuts and a Fizzberry mocktail. It's been 45 minutes since takeoff and they still haven't unlocked the doors, which on a seven hour flight is like, but, but, um, cheers you guys. I'm watching the series Chernobyl. Uh, I'm probably gonna binge it on this flight and I'm creamed out so far. So who is ready for the most exciting aspect of this seat? As you can see, the seat is already very private because from my seat, I cannot see anyone else. They've made them staggered, so it's really nice because all I see is this wall. But if I close the door, it's all mine. As you can see, my head and my eyes are actually still above the door and I'm even in a bit of a reclined position. So this definitely isn't as private as Q Suite, for example, where the door is much higher. I think in bed mode, it will make a bigger difference. But for now, really, I don't have more privacy than I did when the door was open. I love the seat. It's so good. These reverse herringbones. And what's nice is, is that when I sit forward like this, I can look straight out the window. I don't have to bend at all because some other seats have like a barrier here. I see straight out. It's such a nice angle to be sitting kind of like this forward diagonally. Um, so yeah, I'm a huge fan of this seat so far. So now for the biggest criticism of British Airways. In my opinion, what they do is absolutely unacceptable for business class. And that is that they charge people for seat selection. This seat would have cost me $108 to reserve on one flight. Imagine if you're flying from the US to India, you could easily pay over $400 for seat selection. You know, if someone's gonna spend several thousand dollars on a seat, do you really wanna nickel and dime them and then not allow them to get a seat? So thank goodness this window seat was available at check-in. So I could select it online. I was there literally 24 hours before. I set a reminder on my phone. I went on the website 24 hours before and I could select this seat for free. So I'm happy because I saved $110, but in my opinion, it's just completely unacceptable for British Airways to charge for seat selection. And if they want to be viewed as a premium carrier, that's not something they can do. British Airways also has Wi-Fi on the E350. So let's see how much the packages cost. All right. This is honestly quite expensive and quite limited data. I thought they were doing like unlimited browser packages, but unfortunately not. Okay, so you guys, one hour and 45 minutes after takeoff, the appetizer has been served. Uh, let me pull up the window shade so you guys can see what I have right here. So this is my appetizer. Um, it is a salad, as you can see. It has asparagus, lettuce leaves, and tomatoes. Um, the bread is still served in plastic, and the butter is still served in the packet instead of here, which I guess is where it's supposed to be served. So I don't think I'll necessarily be reviewing the flavor of this, since the salad is um, incredibly basic, as you can see. Alright, wow you guys, so the appetizer was just cleared. Let me get my phone here real quick to show you. So I put this timer on about a minute after I finished my main course to see how long it would take them to collect the meals. And it took them almost 20, well about 27 minutes to just collect the appetizer. That's not even to serve the main course. And we've already been flying for about two and a half hours at this point. The main course still hasn't come out. Now I don't blame the crew for this at all. They seem to be working incredibly hard. They're friendly throughout. They just seem very stressed. So either British Airways is understaffing them so they don't have enough people preparing the meals in the galley. They don't have enough time to do this. Or British Airways is skimping on training. But this is actually unacceptable. Two and a half hours in and the appetizer is just cleared after 30 minutes. No. So my main course is finally here. I'm going to show you that in a second. I just want to show you that. Um, Here's the total time since they cleared my appetizer now. It's just it's such a shame. The guy in front of me is like an old man. He was sleeping and he's been waiting the whole flight to sleep. 
but the flight attendants won't come up because of the food. It's been two hours and 50 minutes since we took off, and now the main course is being served on a seven-hour flight. And again, I don't blame the flight attendants for this. So here is my dish. It is a vegetable curry. It doesn't actually seem to be any type of uh, tofu or anything in here. It's just vegetables and white rice, and also they didn't actually clear um, the plastic, so this is still here. So now, one hour and almost 15 minutes uh, after I finished my appetizer, or 15 minutes after I finished my main course, here is dessert. Still with the plastic and everything. <laughs> oh well, here's a nice turn of events. Apparently there was a non-dairy dessert for me, which is this brownie, which actually looks quite good. This is at least a satisfying end to the meal. And it's been three hours and ten minutes since takeoff. So, trays cleared one hour and 45 minutes after finishing my appetizer. So the toilet is being constantly occupied because they're letting passengers from economy and premium economy come up here and use the lavatory. It's not a huge deal, but usually airlines will restrict the toilets to the cabins that they're in just because there's a number of toilets proportional to the number of seats. So uh, yeah, it's not great because I need to go to the bathroom and it's constantly occupied because people are like walking back and forth from here. Okay, I'm almost gonna have my seat. Okay, I'm just about to have my seat made into a bed. I went up to get my uh, pod so I can take a thumbnail first and I just noticed that there's only one other person in this entire cabin who actually has their door closed, so no one seems to be using it. I'm not sure why. But in that case, what a shame and what a waste. Here's a look at the seat in bed mode. Apparently there is no turn down service in club suites. Oops. But yeah, I made my own bed. Let's see what it's like. Uh, right now it's really comfortable just lounging like this. So when I go further in like this, it is a little bit tight, but not too bad. It's definitely quite comfortable. Uh, quite a comfortable area for the feet and by the knees, I think it's definitely high enough to be comfortable as well. Overall, a comfortable bed, really comfortable bedding. And when you're in bed mode, the seat is so private because look, the door is quite high, so <laughs> I'm super comfy and this makes me tired, so that's not a good idea to try to fall asleep. I'm gonna try to continue watching this TV show for a little bit more. I'm on episode four of Chernobyl and we have about two and a half hours left of the flight. All right, it is suddenly time for the pre-arrival meal, the afternoon tea. The flight attendant said she'd serve my meal in the plastic so I could see what it was, which is uh, interesting. But yeah, this is a sandwich and of course some more berries and some cranberry juice for the pre-arrival meal. There we go. All right, it's time for a toilet tour. <laughs> so here's the lavatory. Some soap. What's this? Hand wash. a look at the in-flight snack bar. Okay, I made it to my hotel in Toronto. I'm staying at the Delta Hotel by Union Station and check out my view. This is 
insane. Over there is Billy Bishop Airport. I think that's what it's called, the downtown airport in Toronto. The planes take off like this. So, so cool. I'm on the 31st floor. Hey, good morning guys from Toronto. I decided I was gonna save the conclusion for today just because yesterday I was very tired and I tried doing a conclusion but I don't feel like I formulated it quite correctly. So first of all, the new seat is excellent. It's really, really impressive. And of course the door is so cool but in some way I feel like all of this is just trying to put lipstick on a pig because sure, the seat is great but somehow I still didn't find the door to make such a big difference compared to like Cathay Pacific, American Airlines, China Airlines on their reverse herringbone seats. So the structure is kind of the same. You have almost an equal amount of privacy and most people weren't using the door anyway. So it made me wonder like, why did they choose to do this? Is it more of a gimmick? Is it a PR stunt? Because maybe people didn't, maybe people don't know to use it yet. But even when I closed the door, it didn't really make a huge difference. And the fact remains that BA has many, many issues. And I get it, British Airways makes fantastic profits and I'm not surprised they do when they literally serve a salad as an appetizer in business class that probably costs them, what do you think, 20 cents to make? And then the sandwich that they served before landing, I could get a much better sandwich at Marks and Spencer's, Pret, Boots, literally any place in Heathrow could get me a better sandwich for one or two pounds and instead they're serving something like that as a meal in business class. It just doesn't make any sense. I also felt so bad for the crew on this flight because they were stressed as heck and I could tell. I don't know if they didn't have enough training on the new A350 and they were rushing around or if they were understaffed, but whatever it was, the fact that it took them three and a half hours to get to the meal service, yes, they were apologetic and I don't blame them. As I said, I blame British Airways, but it shouldn't take half a transatlantic flight. Literally, can you imagine going to a restaurant and waiting three and a half hours for your food and then like that little salad coming out? And that's why I feel like British Airways should maybe invest a little bit more in the soft product. They've made big improvements since I flew them last in terms of bedding, the amenity kit, and I'd say the food was a little bit better overall, but unfortunately they're still nowhere near many other airlines. So of course, the A350 Club Suite is a beautiful upgrade for British Airways and I'm gonna compare it in depth in my next video. So make sure you subscribe so you see that. But for now, I still won't be seeking out to fly British Airways, unfortunately. There are so many better options and the only positives I can really say about this flight are nice seats, actually decent entertainment system also, and a great crew, such a friendly crew. They reminded me so much of the Glee team from my dad wrote a porno. If you haven't listened to that podcast and you're over 18, go do it after this video because it's the best thing ever. And I always find that British Airways has consistently very good service in my experience. A couple times I've had a miss, but generally I think it's better than most European airlines and the cabin crews are kind of British Airways best asset. So I wish they would give them the tools they need to provide as good of an experience as possible, which clearly they couldn't really do on this flight. And just the fact that they charge over $100 per leg for seat selection, that enforces this. Also, the fact that people were coming up from economy and premium economy and using the lavatories in business class. I don't really mind it, but when you have to wait for a long time and the crew don't have time to enforce the rules, then that's also a shame. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you make your decision, but I can't wait to see you all for the next video very soon where I will be comparing these products and maybe I'll add a bit of first class in there to see how the club suit compares to first class as well. So make sure you're subscribed so you see that video. I can't wait to see you all very soon. And until then, fly safe. What?